Sharon, um, take it away. Um, okay. Yeah, sure. Um, today I can um, talk a little bit about uh, the Google Cloud Platform Spark Operator. Um, I think in two weeks ago I attended uh, a, uh, a SIG meeting um, where uh, Jerry uh, presented his uh, Spark Operator. But this one is uh, from uh, Google. I think it has uh, more momentum and more uh, contributors and users. Um, so let's uh, look at uh, what it's about. Um, so I have uh, a few things I want to talk about for today. Um, so to, to get started, I'll just talk briefly about what the operator pattern is, but I think most people are already familiar with it. Um, but the, the uh, this GCP Spark operator is, uh, uh, is basically an implementation of this pattern. And then I'll talk about the uh, architecture of the uh, of this uh, Spark operator, how to install it, and um, what are uh, what some of its uh, basic features are. Um, and then um, I'll talk about uh, a CLI tool that's provided in this operator project called the Spark CTL. Uh, it uh, makes uh, some of the uh, uh, workflow uh, with uh, managing Spark jobs easier, um, as we'll see. Um, then um, uh, comes a feature called Mutating Admission Webhook. Uh, this is a feature that the Spark operator uh, leverages to um, uh, to provide lots of uh, flexibility in uh, customizing your Spark driver and executor pods. I think this is one of the most useful features uh, in this project. Uh, to uh, as a as a last thing, uh, I'll talk about uh, exporting and uh, looking at the Prometheus matrix uh, Prometheus metrics uh, with uh, this uh, Spark operator. Um, I'll conclude with uh, some uh, future things that you can contribute to this project. Okay, the operator pattern. Uh, this is uh, a way of uh, packaging operational knowledge of a of a complex or, uh, in many cases, stateful application and make it native to Kubernetes. Uh, native means that uh, uh, you can interact with uh, this uh, 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 this custom resource or your application uh, in uh, uh, using standard uh, Kubernetes tooling, uh, for example, kubectl. And uh, just as just as you would interact, uh, how you would interact with uh, uh, traditional uh, Kubernetes resources like stable sets or uh, deployment or uh, pods, and uh, uh, so the purpose is to abstract away those details and uh, uh, provide a smoother user experience. Uh, the uh, what it really is is uh, it's an application uh, specific controller that uh, extends the uh, Kubernetes API that makes managing this uh, complex application. Uh, uh, makes makes management uh, creation and configuration easier, um, and it, the way it does it is uh, uh, it's, a, it's an event loop that's uh, constantly running. Um, the operator uh, component um, keeps observing for events, uh, listening for uh, uh, creation of a new custom resource, for example, and then once ever, uh, something happens, uh, the operator evaluates um, the current status, what it should do, and then it acts on the uh, the insights that uh, uh, what it thinks it, it should do, and this loops, uh, this event loop keeps keeps going. Um, then let's uh, quickly get into the the gist of the talk, uh, the, the specifics of uh, the GCP Spark operator. Uh, it was uh, created by this guy called Ina Lee at Google, uh, and it's now open source. Uh, the link is provided on the slide. Uh, the approach that it takes uh, to managing uh, Spark jobs is that it creates two custom resource definitions or CRDs, uh, one called Spark application, another called Schedule Spark application. Um, so those CRDs represent ab uh, abstractions of a Spark job. Um, and th they are what make uh, Spark jobs uh, native citizens in Kubernetes. You can, uh, as we'll see in a minute, um, uh, you can interact with the uh, Spark jobs, manage them and uh, monitor them uh, using uh, standard uh, tools. Uh, yeah, the goal is to, Streamline the <coughs> creation, management, and monitoring of Spark jobs. Uh, let's uh, take a look at the architecture diagram of this uh, project. Uh, so the way it works is that uh, you would uh, uh, document your Spark job application, uh, <coughs> uh, sorry, Spark job specification in a uh, in a YAML file. So here in the example is uh, sparkpy.yaml. Uh, we'll see an example of this uh, uh, the content, what the contents look like in a in a minute. Uh, but uh, once you have the Spark job spec uh, documented in the YAML. Uh, you would use uh, uh, kubectl or uh, uh, sparkctl that we'll talk about. Uh, use these uh, CLI tools to submit uh, your YAML to the uh, API server. And once the API server re receives your request to, for example, uh, 
create a new uh, CRD uh, self Spark application or schedule Spark application, the uh, there's a component uh, called controllers uh, in the Spark operator uh, that would uh, uh, you know, get this request and assemble all of those uh, configurations and pass them to another component called submission runner. So what the submission runner does is uh, basically uh, there's a translation going on because uh, in the YAML you have all those configurations that you want to uh, uh, want your Spark job to have, and then the submission runner is uh, translating those uh, configurations in a Spark into a Spark submit command, and it runs that Spark submit command by talking to the API server. Um, and, and then the API server would in turn create the driver pod, uh, which then uh, would launch executor pods depending on your configurations. Um, yeah, there's also a component called uh, a, a pod monitor that uh, keeps monitoring uh, the pod events. Um, there are also, there are also uh, optional components, mutating admission webhook and, uh, that we'll see uh, in a little bit. Um, yeah, the basic features are um, uh, uh, because uh, it uses a, a YAML to, to to document the spec of a job, um, so the YAML is uh, declarative in nature. It's uh, easy to do things like version control. Um, and because uh, under the hood, what it really does is uh, uh, it's, it's, it runs a Spark submit command. So uh, everything that Spark submit uh, takes uh, of those uh, configuration options, um, the Spark operator also supports. Uh, you only need to figure out what you need to put in the YAML, uh, the translation. You just need to, to know that. Uh, there's, a, a, there's a good documentation. It's uh, easy to figure out. It also supports a cron-like scheduled um, uh, Spark jobs. Uh, so that's what the CRD scheduled Spark application is for. Um, and the, the interesting feature is uh, mutating animation webhook. The operator uses that to uh, enable pod customization. You can mount config, uh, config maps or volumes in your driver and executor pods. Uh, we'll see that uh, in a few slides. Uh, you can uh, also use the Spark operator to enable automatic uh, job resubmission if you would like to uh, change the specs of an existing Spark job or to restart it if, uh, upon failure, uh, if that's what you want. Um, yeah, uh, at the end, it also supports uh, exporting uh, Prometheus metrics. So this, is an, this is an incomplete list of features, but uh, I think these, uh, these are what uh, the, main, the main things are. Um, let's uh, talk about uh, prerequisites. Um, it requires uh, Kubernetes 1.8 and above uh, because uh, uh, it re relies on garbage collection of uh, customer resources uh, that's only available starting 1.8. And if you would like to use uh, mutating animation webhook, then uh, Kubernetes 1.9 and above uh, is required uh, because uh, this feature is only uh, only becomes a beta feature starting 1.9. Um, and uh, exactly what uh, distribution of Kubernetes you you install the operator in uh, doesn't really matter. Uh, personally, I've used it on GKE and OpenShift. Uh, both worked fine. Um, the, uh, uh, yeah, uh, how to install it? Uh, it's uh, easy to install uh, because there's a there's an incubator chart on the central uh, Helm charts repo. Uh, uh, yeah, you basically add the add the repo Helm repo and uh, install it. Um, just uh, what you what you would do uh, for any other standard chart. And there are other options to uh, to customize it. Uh, for example, uh, in a you would like to install it in a different namespace, or uh, there are some components that you would like to enable or disable. Um, but uh, you, yeah, you can look at the uh, the link. Uh, there's a, uh, a concise documentation um, that you can look at. I won't go into details here. Uh, now let's uh, take a look at a sample uh, YAML, um, what it looks like. Um, so here, uh, so basically you would like, uh, you, you name your Spark job like SparkPy and you would like to run it in default namespace. Um, yeah, that's where you specify your namespace and you provide your image. Uh, your main class application file, so all standard things. Then um, yeah, you can uh, configure your driver pod to uh, with uh, some memory uh, resource requirements, what service account you would like to use, and, and how many executor instances you would like to launch, and um, resource requirements for executor. Um, so this is a very uh, simple YAML, and you can have uh, uh, all sorts of uh, other configurations too, uh, as long as the Spark submit supports it and you figure out uh, uh, the corresponding spec in the YAML. But yeah, this is what it looks like. 
the basic operations um, very easy uh, because uh, now the CRDs are there, then you can just uh, create a Spark job, for example, just as you would create a pod. Uh, kubectl apply uh, the, the YAML and uh, to list all the jobs, um, uh, k-get Spark applications, uh, the, the name of the, uh, the CRD. Um, yeah, to get uh, other details, for example, events, uh, you can do a, a describe, uh, delete, uh, yeah, very standard things. Uh, uh, let's uh, now look at uh, the, uh, the the custom CLI tool provided in the, in this project uh, called Spark CTL. Um, so here I I, I said it's uh, it complements uh, Cube CTL uh, to make some operations easier, but um, uh, but I would say that uh, it it can fully replace Cube CTL when working with uh, uh, working with uh, Spark application or scheduled Spark application CRDs because. Uh, uh, yeah, because everything that kubectl can do, sparkctl can do, and it, it makes things easier. Uh, for example, listing all Spark jobs, we can do sparkctl list, but with uh, kubectl, you would have to do kubectl uh, get Spark applications, things like that. Uh, so it's longer, but this uh, here is shorter. Um, to get the status of a Spark job, sparkctl status sparkpy, again with the kubectl, the command is uh, a little longer. Uh, to get the events, um, uh, again, it's shorter, but uh, with the uh, uh, with kubectl, you have to do a describe and Spark application, things like that is uh, longer. And getting Spark job logs uh, is again a one-liner, but with kubectl, you need to first find the find the pod you would like to, uh, the pod corresponding to your uh, Spark job and then get the logs from that pod. Uh, so it's two commands, but here it's uh, one command. Yeah, just uh, some uh, syntactic sugar that makes your uh, job a little easier. Uh, besides that, there are a few other uh, features. Uh, Spark CTL also supports uh, port forwarding to view the web UI. Uh, again, this is something that kubectl can do because uh, uh, with kubectl, you can, uh, again, just figure out the pod uh, first and then do a port forwarding on that pod. Uh, but here, you don't, uh, yeah, you don't need to find the pod. You just uh, uh, know the, the Spark job name. Here is a Spark Pi, so, uh, so a little easier. Uh, it also supports staging local dependencies to S3 and GCS. Um, so uh, for your uh, for dependencies that you specified in your Spark Pi or YAML, um, you can specify um, your uh, GCS bucket or S3 bucket to upload them to uh, to a remote place. Um, but uh, you need to configure your authentication and stuff uh, upfront. Uh, the details are in the documentation, which I won't talk about here. Um, Let's see how much time I have left. Uh, okay, so, I'll, uh, so now let's go to the mutating animation webhook. Uh, so this feature is uh, it's, it's a feature about uh, of Kubernetes itself rather than the operator, but uh, the uh, Spark operator um, leverages this feature to uh, uh, to enable uh, a flexible customization of uh, of pods. Uh, what this feature is is uh, is a is a so-called uh, animation controller that intercepts requests to the API server and modifies an object before the object is uh, persisted. Um, uh, as I mentioned, it's a beta feature in 1.9 and above. <clears throat> and uh, the Spark operator uses this feature to achieve uh, mostly three use cases. The first use case is mounting config maps in driver and executor pods. The second feature is mounting volumes. Uh, the third feature is uh, setting pod affinity and anti-affinity, uh, things like uh, what, what nodes you would like to run on or uh, which nodes you would like to avoid. Uh, let's uh, look at a few sample use cases. Um, so when would you like to um, uh, mount, uh, mount config maps in your uh, Spark job pods? Uh, so here's, a, here's an example. Um, so uh, it's uh, very common to uh, have some custom configurations for a job in sparkdefaults.com, sparkim.sh, or log4j properties. So these files are very common. And in order to have these uh, custom configurations in your Spark jobs, you need to have them available in the pods. And uh, uh, the way you do it in the uh, if you, you if you are to use a Spark operator is that you first mount these. Um, oh, so you first mount these files as config maps, and then uh, and then in your YAML file you simply uh, refer to that uh, uh, to the config maps that you've created. And then when the uh, when the Spark uh, CRD uh, the, the Spark job is created. Uh, those uh, config maps that you've pre-mounted would be automatically mounted in the, inside the pods, inside the driver and executor pods. And then your Spark job would be automatically uh, configured as uh, as desired. 
Um, another use case is uh, supporting uh, Hadoop configurations to access HDFS. For example, you would need core side XML and HDFS side XML. These files, again, you can mount as config maps and, uh, uh, and refer to the config maps in the YAML, uh, which would then uh, uh, bring in uh, the config maps and mount them in the pods once your job starts. Uh, so this way you achieve uh, uh, connections with the HDFS. Uh, another use case with uh, the mutating animation webhook is uh, mounting volumes. Uh, uh, so here, is, uh, here a, a use case uh, that I've encountered myself is uh, in the use of uh, Spark History Server. Uh, in this case, both driver and executor pods of a Spark job need to log events to the same volume, which is also the volume used by the History Server pod itself uh, for use in uh, uh, like displaying on the UI, for example. Uh, so here, um, uh, for example, I have a uh, have a PVC uh, volume, and then uh, in order to uh, to have the driver and executor pods log uh, log to that volume, you need uh, to uh, to have this uh, driver dot volume mount. Uh, you specify the name of the volume that's uh, available here, and then the the path that you would like to mount the volume at. Um, yeah, this way um, uh, the uh, uh, as the volume is available at uh, this slash mount directory, and then uh, you can log events there, um, uh, which uh, which are configured here. Um, yeah, so these are some use cases for the uh, mutating animation webhook. I think it's a pretty useful feature, uh, but it's an optional component. You can disable it if you don't want it, uh, to use it. Uh, uh, yeah, last but not least, let's uh, talk about uh, uh, Prometheus metrics. The uh, Spark operator uh, configures a uh, Prometheus JMX exporter to run as a Java agent in the operator pod itself, um, but it also supports uh, emitting metrics, Prometheus metrics in the driver and executor metrics themselves, uh, in the driver and executor uh, executors themselves. Um, so, uh, so the two sets of metrics are um, in a, a, an, an application specific metric, for example, uh, Spark driver app status job duration, uh, so this is uh, a metric that's specific for that job uh, coming from a driver or executor pod. Uh, there's uh, a, also a set of metrics that are higher level, uh, for example, Spark app uh, running count. So these are metrics that are uh, specifically provided by the operator pod uh, itself. Uh, so these are application metrics, application level metrics. Uh, but know that to, ex uh, to expose driver and executor metrics, um, so the first set, your Spark application uh, image uh, that you specify in your YAML uh, that needs to contain the, uh, the Prometheus JMX exporter Java agent jar. Otherwise, uh, the, the metrics won't be exported. But once you have that jar available in your image, uh, it's, uh, yeah, it's easily configurable to, uh, to have those metrics uh, exported. Yeah, here's a, uh, a sample YAML file that uh, config configures the driver and executor metrics to be uh, to be uh, uh, exported. Um, so these are for the first set of metrics that I uh, that I uh, I, sh I showed uh, in a previous slide. Uh, the operator pod itself uh, already configures itself to uh, export application level metrics. Um, yeah, the uh, this slide is just uh, the general thing about how you would look at those metrics. You can look at them in the Prometheus UI or. Uh, 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 for example, you would like to verify the list of metrics oper uh, exported by the Spark, Spark operator pod itself. Then you can uh, find the pod and then do a port forwarding on that. Um, the, the, uh, the, the, the default port is uh, uh, 10 to 54. Um, and uh, once you have that port uh, forwarded, you can go to the metrics endpoint to see the list of the metrics, um, the application level metrics that, that will be shown here. Uh, the same is true for the driver and executor uh, metrics. You can also look at them there. Uh, yeah, the uh, future work is that uh, the current status of the project is that uh, it's fully compatible with the Spark 2.3 and the 2.4. It's been tested with the uh, 2.4 release candidate uh, versions, uh, and uh, it's uh, currently alpha, but uh, it will be upgraded to beta once 2.4 uh, is officially released. Um, so at the, here at the lab end, we are uh, uh, actively evaluating and contributing to this project. So the, our past contributions uh, uh, included uh, uh, the home chart and uh, um, the integration with the Prometheus and the Spark History Server. Uh, the project is still in, in its early stage and uh, it re uh, requires lots of testing to make it mature. So more integration tests are uh, a thing that uh, needs to be uh, added 
and uh, we are also working on that. Also, Kerberos support uh, that's currently uh, lacking. Um, also, Spark CPL doesn't have a very good support for scheduled Spark application. That's also something uh, to be added. Uh, just a few words about uh, uh, the team I'm in. Uh, I work at the Lightband. The team I I work in is called Fast Data Platform. So we are a uh, the product is a, a curated, uh, uh, fully supported platform that helps you help helps developers design, build, and uh, uh, run data pipelines. And our emphasis is on streaming data, so uh, data that moves uh, in real time. Um, and uh, Kafka is obviously a, a very important component. But our entire architecture is built on top of uh, Kubernetes. We used to be based on uh, based on uh, Mesos, uh, DCOS, but uh, now we are uh, re pivoting on top of uh, Kubernetes. And uh, Spark Operator is uh, our uh, well, at least for now, our project of choice to managing uh, Spark jobs on top of uh, Kubernetes. Uh, and uh, uh, our uh, uh, release is going to, uh, our, our upcoming release is going to use uh, OpenShift as our uh, Kubernetes distribution. And uh, we've, we've been testing on OpenShift with the Spark operator and uh, all of the uh, Spark related components, uh, history server, for example. And uh, currently, uh, it lo it's looking good. So I think this is a, a promising project. and. Uh, uh, has a lot of activity, so I encourage you guys to uh, try it out and uh, um, yeah, maybe consider contributing. Yeah, uh, I think I went a little bit too fast because uh, because of a short of time. But uh, yeah, if you have uh, questions, you can shoot me an email or um, yeah, just talk to me. Perfect, Jerome. Thank you very much for taking the time, and um, I'm looking forward at some point soon to getting a demo of the the light yeah. and Form. So hopefully we can schedule some time maybe um, for a deeper dive briefing on that.